Hi guys, my name is Chloe and welcome to the start of another weekly reading vlog. So today is Monday and it's about 1.15 and we um, have had kind of a busy morning. So I just am now updating, but um, at the end of my last vlog, it was the end of the backlist readathon and I finished everything last night. So starting um, last night, but we're gonna say today, I'm reading two different things. One is The Bright Side of Disaster by Catherine Sinner. And this is her debut novel, and I'm really, really liking it. It's about a girl who is engaged, but not quite married to this guy, and they're about to have a baby, and the guy is a musician and just a big dud, honestly. He um, is like a commitment phobe, and he's just not a great dude. So um, the back says that, well, I'm not gonna tell you what the back says because I'm like 65 pages in and what the back says has not happened yet. And so I kind of would prefer to just go into this blind. If you're a fan of Catherine Center, um, I know a lot of people have liked Things You Save in a Fire or How to Walk Away. Um, so I figured I would just go back and read her, her first book. So um, I'm really liking this one and it's only like um, 250 or 270 pages long so it's not very long and hopefully I'll get that finished relatively soon. The other thing I picked up was um, Then She Was Gone by Lisa Jewell. Okay so this happened twice in a row. Obviously I need to put my phone on Do Not Disturb when I'm filming but anyway the other book I picked up was Then She Was Gone by Lisa Jewell and so far I'm also really liking that so I'm loving both of the books I'm reading. The Then She Was Gone is about a 15 year old girl who goes missing and it's told in then and now and the now times well both times um she has a sister and a brother and she's the baby and she's her mom says like that this girl ellie was like her favorite so um yeah i don't know i we j i just found out wh what happened i think and so it's really interesting because i'm not that far into it and i think i know who took her and what happened or what, I mean, I think I know what happened. And so I don't really know where the rest of the book's gonna go, but I love Lisa Jewell. I'm listening to it on audio, um, but I have it physically and I love Lisa Jewell because she has short chapters. So I may pick it up physically when I finish this Catherine Center one. I don't really know. Um, loving both of that. So um, as far as life goes, this morning, um, I went over to my mom and dad's for a little bit just because, guys, I am not doing well with being isolated. I like, I, it gives me a lot of anxiety to not have anything on the calendar. And this is going to be the world's worst clip because my husband is actually in the store right now because we're trying to find yogurt and we're, we can't do dairy. So we buy the Kite Hill plain unsweetened yogurt and we use that like a sour cream or anything. And apparently it's sold out everywhere. So we're at our last ditch um, grocery store and he's having a hard time finding it. And so he's calling me all the time. So sorry, this clip is terrible, but um, I don't know. Life-wise, yeah, we went to my mom and dad's because being isolated and not having anything on the calendar is making my anxiety crazy and just everything shutting down. It doesn't help. It's super gray. I don't know if you can tell. It's just very gray and rainy and very cold. And so it just feels very end of the world here. So um, I'm just trying to get out of the house safely. We did go to lunch today at Olive Garden. Um, I'm hoping, you know, that none of us have any sort of symptoms. So I don't think we, and we haven't been anywhere. So I don't think we're a risk to others. Uh, and, uh, you know, risk to ourselves. We're being trying to be smart about it. We're just trying to do a little bit of, of outings just for mental health. Um, you know, it's just a fine, fine line right now between making yourself crazy and being safe and doing what you need to do. So um, we're just trying to toe that line and make sure everybody's mental health is okay and just that we're doing doing what we can do. So um, I like had an exi existential crisis last night because the library has closed. It closed, I think, on the 13th or 14th, and it just up and closed. Like there was no advanced warning, nothing. And so I love to do the Book Talks After Dark uh, book club with Shelby from Shelby Tiger Reads and Kendra from Kendra Loves Books. And I had not picked up the book for this month yet. And so they're closed until the 30th, which means I was not going to be able to read the book. So I was really upset. I looked at Kindle. It's like $8.99 on 
Kindle and I just can't do that. And it's not on Audible, it's not on Scribd. So um, I was looking everywhere for it and I sent a request on Friday for our library to purchase the ebook or the audiobook or something, um, thinking maybe they would still be checking the online thing. And so just now when we were at lunch, I was like, listen to this to my husband and I told him that story and I said, I don't even think they're working online, which is a bummer. Um, and then no sooner had I said that, I got an email saying they purchased the audiobook. So that is awesome. And so I'll get to participate and that makes me so, 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 so happy. So that's awesome. Um, my parents and grandparents and my grandma live, like their houses are connected. And so we saw my grandma too. And she, like she's, she's 80, um, 85. She'll be 86 this year. And she reads like a book a day. And so she depends on our library and she's like heartbroken and she had a Kindle and didn't like it and she doesn't like to do the e-copies of anything so I don't know I'm hoping I can get her on on board with the e-copies and e-books because I don't know what she's going to do they're staying two weeks for now but um they have warned parents be prepared that the school year might just be over so uh I don't know if the library will follow suit or how they'll how they'll deal with it but it's gonna be a long time so um, I also will probably take my grandma with some of my unhaul books and see if she wants anything from the Little Free Library, maybe. I don't know. Poor thing. My aunt was also supposed to come from Hawaii. She was supposed to get here today uh, to see my grandmother, and she's not coming, which I think is the safe and good thing to do just because I don't know what's going on in Hawaii, but I know sharing germs is probably not a good idea right now and flying and I don't know. I don't blame her at all for not coming. So there's a lot of bummers that's going on with this. But again, if we're keeping everybody safe, that it's far worth it. And just um, trying to trying to figure out how to make this all work. So um, like I said, wrapping it back up to books, I'm loving both of the things I'm reading. So I will check in later and let you know um, if I finish them or what I think about them. And we'll talk then. Bye. Hey guys, so it's nap time and um, I am just in my bed reading this, um, The Bright Side of Disaster by Catherine Center and I am loving it. I, we came in here, like I was laying with my daughter to put her down and I almost fell asleep in there. So I got up finally, came in here and read like 10 or 15 pages and then went to sleep. So um, I woke up and then read a little bit more and now she's up and I have to go get her and I just cannot put this down. It's so good. It's just, and she just had the baby and it's so um, just funny because it's so real and it's just awesome. So um, I'm really, really, really liking this. I'm 115 pages in and there is 200 and that's the reader's guide. So 249. So it really will not take long. Um, and I wish I hadn't fallen asleep because now I just want to keep reading and I have to like get up and do things. So I'm going to get up, get her. Um, she normally likes to like cuddle and chill for a minute after she gets up. And then I think we're going to cut my husband's hair. And, um, then my car is back in the shop because the running lights are like the daytime lights are not working on the passenger side. And I told them that when I took it in and they said they were working fine. And then today they're sure shit not working. And so I took them back in and said, Hey, they're not working. And so I just called because I took it at like 1130 and it's like four. And they said, we can't get them not to come on. And every time, like I stopped and started my car a million times today and they wouldn't come on. So I don't know if I'm not talking about the right thing or what's going on, but they are going to look at it again. And then hopefully I can go get my car before dinner, but I don't know. So, um, last night I was feeling like crap and just had no motivation to make dinner or anything. So we pulled out food from the freezer. And so tonight I have to make stir fry and like, that's an easy dinner. I need to just buck up and do it. And I just saw that president Trump, um, issued a thing saying don't go out to eat don't go in crowds above 10 people <sighs> and so now I'm like shoot should we not have gone to Olive Garden and again I'm back in the whole mind f of like can I go to the grocery store can I not what do I do did I just risk mine or my baby's life or somebody at Olive Garden's life by going there I don't know and so um I don't know I really am ready for this like isolation period to be over it's making me a little nutty but I'm going to get up. I'm also having like terrible heartburn with this pregnancy. And so I'm like laying down, which is the worst thing. So now that I'm sitting up, I'm feeling a little bit better. But 
think I need to go get some crackers or something. I don't know. But really, all I want to do is sit here and read this book. So, <sighs> come on, productivity. Hi, everyone. It is Tuesday evening. It's like 7.45. And um, I'm just updating for the first time today because we've had kind of a busy day. So, um, this morning we got up and we went... Um, over to Marshall's for a minute just to pick out some summer clothes um, for my daughter. And so we did that. And then we went and picked up my Jeep. Um, it was back in the shop because the running light still wasn't working. So they finally got it figured out and got it replaced. And so went and picked that up. And then we went over to my mom and dad's and played for a little bit just to have a change of scenery. So um, then we came home, ate lunch, um, did nap time and then, um, our realtor slash friend came over and we had to sign some papers for, um, our house that is closing on April 1st. So that was all good. Um, but all that to be said, I was waiting to update until I finished one of my books. And so I finally did, um, during nap time and then, but my friend and realtor came over right after. So anyway, I finished Then She Was Gone by Lisa Jewell. And I'm giving that between a three and a three and a half stars. Um, I thought it was good. And I love Lisa Jewell. I love the short chapters. Uh, but there were a few huge plot holes that I'm like, how does that make sense? How is that possible? And it just, it made it like this whole story is silly because the, that would never happen. That doesn't make sense. And so that part of it was kind of meh. And then it was also pretty predictable. Um, so overall, it was just pretty meh for me. I expected to love it. And I think that kind of hurt me because I had really high expectations for it. But um, I've read Lisa Jewell's non-thrillers and don't care for them. And I think this might have been my first thriller for her. So I'm going to try one or two more maybe. But I don't know if maybe she's just meh for me. Uh, the short chapters do really help, but overall, I just didn't love the story. I don't know if I've talked about what it's about, but um, just briefly, it's about a girl named Ellie who goes missing, and the book is told in then and now, so we get to see the then. Ellie is like 17 or 18, just about done with high school, and then she goes missing, and so the rest of the book is her mother telling us um, kind of she... They, the cops try to make it seem like maybe she ran away uh, and 10 years goes by and they just have no leads. So that's what they assume. Her mom doesn't think so. And then her mom meets a guy named Floyd who has a daughter that's nine years old, I think, and looks very similar to Ellie. So she is trying to figure out um, how everybody's connected, what happened to her daughter and all of this stuff. I did not like Laurel at all. She was terrible to her remaining daughter, Hannah. And like by the end that gets resolved, but we don't know how or like anything. She just, then they have a good relationship, I guess. And so I just didn't like her. And we find out what happened to Ellie like really early in. You saw that in my last clip. We saw like, it wasn't even a hundred pages. We find out what happened to Ellie. And so the rest of the book was just Laurel trying to figure out all the pieces and the connections. And because I didn't like Laurel, it made the story kind of, uh, lackluster for me. And then those plot holes were a big problem. So three, three and a half max. Uh, it was just okay. Then I'm almost done with The Bright Side of Disaster by Catherine Sinner. I think I have like 30, maybe 40 pages left. And this one is really, really good. I'm really enjoying this. Um, last time I got on, I told you it was about a girl who was pregnant and engaged. And then her fiance is kind of a dud and he disappears. Um, he just runs away. And so it's her story of um, like kind of how she does life with a baby and she's just figuring out, um, motherhood, single motherhood. And I just am really enjoying it. It's, um, just kind of perfect for where I am and my kind of, I love women's fiction. So if you're not a fan of women's fiction, probably not a huge fan of this. There is a romance that I'm not sure how it's going to resolve. Um, I really enjoy the romance, so I'm hoping it is a happy ending for me, but we'll see. So, that's everything. Um, as for coronavirus update here in Kansas, they have officially canceled school for the rest of the year. So that is, um, that's that. We went to Marshall's today, like I said, just for um, the, the risk of an outing 
is worth the benefit of my mental health, I think. So we went, we were very careful, um, and we asked the late or the lady said that they have been pretty busy and there were quite a few people in there. So I think, I don't know, there's a lot of people hopefully being smart about their outings. Um, there was another case here in Kansas today. So again, still the, the closest case has been like an hour and a half away. So uh, that feels okay, but they also released some information on pregnancy and the risk of the coronavirus. I don't know how accurate or how reliable the data is, but regardless, it's a little anxiety provoking. I think the UK did a 12 week quarantine on pregnant ladies, which would put me through the birth date of this baby. So um, I'm hoping that's not going to happen here, but we'll see. So we're just kind of along for the ride and I will update tomorrow and let you know my final thoughts on this book. And I think the next thing I'm going to pick up on audio is um, Anne of the Island, I think. That's the third book in the Anna Green Gables series. And I am reading that as a part of the Anna Long um, a, read along that's going on hosted by Tia from Tia and All the Books and Amanda from The Curly Reader. You read one Anna Green Gables book every month. And so we're on the third one. And so I think I'm going to pick that up next as my next audiobook. And so I will update tomorrow. Bye. So quick update on um, my copy of Mind Till Midnight by Lisa Claypes for um, the, the Book Tops After Dark book club. I just was looking because I was thinking, huh, my next audiobook, will I do Anne of the Island or do I want to do that and get it done so it's ready for the book club? And the audiobook does not release until June 22nd. So they bought the audiobook, which is awesome, but I don't have access to it. So I just emailed her and said, hey, I know it's kind of a long shot, but would the library be willing to purchase an ebook since the physical is not available? So we'll see. I may or may not be able to participate in that, but regardless, I'll watch it because I like like watching anyway. And um, this one's a little out of my comfort zone, so if I miss it, I won't be heartbroken. But bummer on that one. Hey guys, it is Wednesday, um, Wednesday morning, and I was just gonna get on and let you know that I finished um, The Bright Side of Disaster by Katherine Sinner, and I loved it. I'm gonna give it four and a half stars. The only complaint I have is that the main character made some decisions that were like so frustrating, super silly, and like specifically with her fiance Dean, like I don't see the appeal to him at all, and she gives him way too many chances. So um, that was my only complaint, but overall I loved the book. So I started Anne of the Island last night, and I'm about halfway through it, and I'm really liking it. Um, Anne is 18, and she goes away to college, and um, it's just like you totally get all those freshman jitters because she's very sad to leave Avonlea and she's very like nervous about what's to come and she just you totally feel that like freshman anxiety and so she goes and it's her story there at college and so far I'm loving it I, this series really I don't think can do a whole lot of wrong so um, that's what I'm reading and then physically I'm going to pick up in five years by Rebecca Searles um, my sister had it out from the library and there's a really long wait list for it but our library is closed for at least two weeks so um, she has it and has read it so she's like well you might as well take it. The people on the wait list aren't going to get it. So um, I'm going to I'm gonna cash in on this little perk of the library being closed and get to skip the line a little bit and read it. So that is awesome. I'm going to read that physically and listen to Anne of the Island uh, as today goes on. And I will check in later. Bye. Hey, guys. Um, it's about 5 o'clock on Wednesday. And I was just going to let you know I'm about 50 pages into In Five Years by Rebecca Searles. And I'm really liking it. So far, It's um, she has kind of explained her life currently. She's um, just got engaged to a guy that is like perfect for her, it seems like. And he's really successful. She's really successful. They are just doing good things. And then she wakes up one morning or one evening after like a nap. And she is with somebody else living in Brooklyn. And then she goes back to sleep and wakes back up and it's her first life. And so she doesn't know um, what, if that was like a premonition for five years or what. And she just can't figure out what that was about or what's going on. So, um, so far really intriguing, really interesting. I am just exhausted. So I tried to read during nap time and I kind of like dozed off and then fell down a rabbit hole of coronavirus stuff. And um, I think what I'm going to do is say that my channel 
Um, we're not here for coronavirus stuff. We all know what's going on everywhere in the world. It's craziness. And I think just hearing people talk about the craziness in their area is making my anxiety worse. And so um, I think for me, I'm just going to say nothing about the coronavirus from here on out. Um, being pregnant and, and having the hormones of pregnancy and then also kind of knowing what birthing stuff is going on right now. It's just really not helpful for my anxiety and for my mental health. So, um, I think as of now, this channel is going to be coronavirus update free. Um, so that's good. We'll just focus on the positive, focus on the books, focus on the fun stuff. Um, today was beautiful. It was like 60, maybe 65 degrees. And so we, um, this morning my mom came over to kind of hang out and help me, uh, entertain my daughter a little bit so I could do some more organizing in the garage and that kind of stuff. And it ended up, I did my organizing in the garage and then we just played outside because it was so pretty. And we met our neighbors across the street and they have three kids that are like eight, eight, four, and two, or seven, four, and two, something like that. And so, um, and she kind of gave me the rundown of our whole new neighborhood. So that's great. There's a lot of kids and that'll be really fun. And just being able to be outside makes everything so nice. Um, I'm sure you can hear that peekaboo bear going on. It's like distracting me, but, um, yeah, so that's what we did this morning. Then had lunch here and then, um, played a little more outside before nap and then took, she took a nap. I did what I just told you I did. Um, I have like two and a half hours left on Anne of the Island on the audiobook, and I'm listening at two and a half times speed. So I sh I'll probably finish that tonight. I probably won't get on an update just because I'm so tired. And as you can see, I'm already kind of looking like, and I'm in my, in my PJs kind of ready for the day to be done. So, um, I probably won't update tonight, but again, it's kind of shaping up to be a three and a half, four star, kind of like the whole series is for me. I really like it. It's cute. The, um, personality of Anne and the twins and just all of her friends. I, um, I know there's been some talk on the, uh, Goodreads group about her friend, um, there's two, her, her, she's got two girlfriends with P names, and one is very, um, Phil, Philippa, Phil, Philippa, Phil, Philippa, am I, I don't know what her name is, I'm spacing on that, but I think you guys know who I'm talking about, she's like very beautiful, very wealthy, um, and she knows it, and she like comes off as innocent and sweet, but I'm kind of wondering if that's just Anne's because Anne is so innocent and, su and sweet, like if that's just her understanding of her. Um, there's some talk on the Goodreads group about like, I'm not sure if I like her or not. And I don't really think I do, but I don't know. I mean, Anne can find the good in anybody, so so should I be able to. So um, I think I really am liking seeing grown up Anne and seeing her and, and the girls that she's rooming with. And um, so I think that'll probably be a three and a half, four star, but I will confirm tomorrow when I finish it. Um, and then in five years, I don't know how much reading I'll get done on that tonight. I'm going to make mashed potatoes right now. And then I have pulled some meatloaf out of the freezer. Um, but like I, I think I've said before, we're, we are vegetarian, but eat some fish. Um, but so it's actually a lentil loaf. It's not a meatloaf, but, um, so I'm going to pull that out and we're going to have that with, uh, mashed potatoes and some sort of fruit and some sort of vegetable probably. And that, and then afterwards, we've been trying to watch The Masked, Masked Singer, but by the time we get done with dinner and stuff, my daughter has been, like, eating for, like, an hour and a half, and I don't know why, and, like, we don't ever want to cut her off because I don't want to, like, make her food insecure, but, like, last night, she ate until bedtime, <laughs> and so, um, we're hoping, like, normally we have at least half an hour between dinner and bedtime, or bath time and that kind of stuff, but... So we've been trying to watch The Masked Singer, but we have like made it through one episode. So hopefully we'll watch some of that tonight. Um, and then I'll probably go to bed and she does because I'm just so tired. And so I don't know if I'll get any reading done in, in five years um, today, but maybe, maybe tomorrow. Tomorrow's another day. So um, I will update later and hope you guys are having a good night. Hey guys, I was just getting on to let you know that um, last night I did finish Anne of the Island and I'm going to give it four stars because I just loved, um, first of all, her and Gilbert's relationship is just so good and I loved like trying to see um, her confusion with that relationship and like jealousy, but also 
not, and I just love that relationship. So that was really good. Um, I love that Diana made an appearance and their friendship and seeing her get married. And then I loved like, this almost crossed into like women's fiction with like a really just sweet main character. And I love women's fiction. So this one was like one of my favorites. I'm gonna give it four stars. Um, super good. I would really recommend reading it and reading at least up to this point. So um, then I picked up The Starter Wife by Gigi Grazer. And I know this is a show I think with um, Deborah Messing and I'm not loving it yet, but um, so far it's okay. I don't know if it'll be enough to make me wanna watch the show, but we'll see. Um, it's about a woman who is married to this like kind of high powered guy. And then he like texts her or calls her or something and says he wants a divorce. And so she is now known as like the starter wife because she's his first wife. And um, yeah, so it's like just the high society type kind of, and um, yeah, I don't know if there's gonna be revenge or what's gonna happen. They have a little three and a half year old daughter, so it's her and her daughter trying to figure out what to do. So um, we are just finishing breakfast, my daughter is. We're gonna go downstairs and do some yoga. I'm a little tight, so we're gonna try to stretch it out a little bit. It is rainy. Um, I think the temperature is supposed to be good today, but super rainy, so I don't know if um, we're gonna get a whole lot of outside time, but. We're gonna go do some yoga and then we're going to um, go to my parents and I need to borrow some thread to take up. I got her a little sundress for the summer, but uh, the straps even like on their tightest are just way too long. So I'm gonna try to borrow some thread and get those cinched up and then that's really just our only outing. Um, so we have kind of decided um, my husband's gonna do all the grocery shopping and that kind of stuff. So. Um, yeah, it really leaves me with not a whole lot to do. So um, we're just gonna do all that and hang out and just try to keep everybody alive and happy. So I will check in later, bye. Hey guys, so it's like seven o'clock on Thursday and I just thought I'd get on an update really quick. I haven't listened to that much of The Starter Wife today, but I'm liking it a little, a little bit more. It's about, um, like I said, this woman getting divorced. And so we're hearing a little bit about her marriage and a little bit about right now. So. Um, it's interesting enough. I think if it continues the way it is, it'll be like a three, three and a half stars max. Um, just a entertaining. And I don't know if it's a movie or a show with, uh, Deborah Messing. I need to look into that. Um, because it might be worth watching a little bit. I don't know. Um, then I am reading still in five years by Rebecca Searle. And guys, I am loving this. About halfway through, maybe there's kind of a twist or a thing thrown at you that I did not see coming. And I just am loving it so much. This book was described as like, um, kind of the, she, well, she is living this life with this guy. She's just gets engaged and then she wakes up and it's five years later and she's with another guy. And so I almost thought it was like, um, kind of which road do you take? Like, um, that Taylor Jenkins read maybe in another life. Um, like which guy should she end up with kind of love triangle. And that's not at all what it is. Like, it's just so interesting. And this is blurbed on the back, but well, it's blurbed on the front by Chloe Benjamin. And then it's blurbed on the back by um, Chloe Benjamin, Josie Silver, Beth O'Leary, Eleanor Lippman, Jenny Mullen, Lori Frankel, and Jamie Ford. So quite a few good authors. And I am just, I'm loving this. I have not read her other book. I think it's called maybe The Dinner List. Um, I haven't read that, but after reading this, I think I'm going to have to. So I've got like 80 pages left and I told my husband and daughter, I said, guys, let's eat quick because mama's got some reading to do. So I, it's like seven o'clock. I'm going to try to finish this tonight. Um, I don't know if I will just because I'm super tired. Um, my daughter, like, so it's beautiful outside. We went outside, um, this morning and just stayed outside all day because it was so, it's like 75 and now it's getting really windy. Like we've got like 40 mile an hour gusts because tomorrow is gonna be 40 degrees. So big switch happening overnight. But um, so we were outside all day. So I thought she would go and crash. Well, she sat in her bed and happily read her books for an hour and a half. And then she took like a 45 minute nap. So um, I had a lot of time, but I kept like, thinking that I was gonna have to get up and get her because I thought she was gonna get angry and wanna get up since she wasn't napping. And so I just didn't really use my time wisely. I'm just gonna be honest with you. I should have read 
more of this and I didn't. I don't even know what I did. I probably spent too much time on social media and doing other stuff. I don't really know. Um, so yeah, all that being said, we did tons of playing and I think I may have mentioned it, but we met our neighbors across the street yesterday and they're super nice and I guess there's a lot of kids on this street so um should be really fun this is giving me such a fun teaser of spring and I can't even wait um like I said it's gonna be like 40 tomorrow and then cold for a while and then hopefully nice again so um just seeing the sunshine and being able to get outside is like such a nice deal for me so um yeah that's all I have to say loving this starter wife's okay I'll check in later bye everyone. It is Friday and it's about 1145 and I just am coming on to let you know I just finished In Five Years by Rebe Rebecca Searle. And so this lighting is kind of crazy, but um, I loved this book. So last night I got on and said I have like 80 pages left and that I was going to try to finish it last night. But then our friends, they live a couple blocks from us and they were out on a walk and it was so beautiful. They decided to stop by. So um, we left the door open and they stood on the porch and we stood inside of our house and we chatted for quite a while. So um, I didn't get this finished last night, but I did finish it this morning and I loved it. It is like Four and a half, almost five stars for me. So this was pitched as a, a, like a love story to me. It was pitched almost like as in a, in a lot of comparison with uh, maybe in Another Life by Taylor Jenkins Reid, where she kind of like I expected a love triangle because she goes to sleep it, after just getting engaged to one guy, and then she wakes up five years later with another guy. And so I expected the middle to be all just like kind of muddling between the guys, figuring out how she transitions from one to the other. And yeah, I'm not sure what I was saying because um, today my daughter said no diaper. She was ready for her big girl panties. So um, we had bought some a while ago just because she has been poop potty trained for a long time and we just have kind of not spent the energy to do the rest of it. So um, today we're wearing panties and so today she just had, had to go and had her first little accident of the day but it's almost noon so that's pretty good. So um, anyway back to this book. This was so good. So it was pitched as like maybe in another life by Taylor Jenkins Reid. I thought we were going to be figuring out which guy she ended up with, that kind of stuff. But this is about so much more. It's about friendship. It's about families. It's about um, grief. It's This is just about love in so many forms. I just loved it. And so, um, I mean, the friendship she has with her best friend, Bella, they've been friends since they were kids, and they're now like maybe 30, I don't know. Um, and that relationship really, it takes a front seat in this book, as well as her relationship with David, um, both of their, Bella's, Bella's especially, relationship with her parents and I just loved this book so much and it I'm not a crier in books um but this one definitely had me kind of tearing up at times and it was just so good so so good and I I could totally understand Bella and Danny walk through something together and Danny is the main female they walk through something together and there's very real emotions portrayed here like Bella is angry at Danny quite a bit and it makes sense. Um, I, I don't want to say much about the situation they're in, but for me, it totally made sense. And I just loved this book. So I'm giving it four and a half stars. The only complaint is um, there is something that Danny does in the end that I think um, I understand why the author did it, but I also could totally, excuse me, baby. I can know who we are. I could totally, um, I think it could have been done more tastefully. I understand why she did it and what she was trying to say and what was happening between Danny and this other character, but I think it could have been done in a more tasteful way. So all that being said, four and a half stars. I've read some complaints about Danny that they didn't, other people didn't necessarily like her. They thought she's a lawyer. She's very, um, almost like cold or she just she thinks more with her head than her heart and um I just I, I could almost relate to her because she's very stubborn she's kind of controlling she's um I mean and that makes her sound terrible but I just I liked her I didn't have any problem with her so um really liked this book wish the ending would have been just a little bit different but a minor change would have really helped um and then the very end I was happy about the ending um I'm just gonna leave it there because I, I don't know that it was necessary, but it was good.
So uh, that's really, really vague. If you've read it, please let me know what your thoughts are on this book. Um, this is, like I said, from my sister. She had it out from the library, and so I got to read it without waiting. And so I'm going to call her next and see. Um, she gave it four stars, so I want to know what her thoughts were on this. But if, you, uh, if you've read this, let me know because I loved it. So I'm almost done with the starter wife on um, audio and that I'm not loving. I think it'll probably be like two, two and a half stars. She, the girl that she gets divorced from this major movie guy and he starts dating Britney Spears and she says in the beginning of the book, like she uses real celebrity names and it's all fake. Like she's just making it up. It's just a story. But I don't like that. Like I don't like that she is talking about Britney Spears. She talks about Matthew McConaughey. Like she talks about all these real famous people and I just don't um I think it's lazy writing I think she could have created the story in a similar way with fictional characters instead of um like the things she's saying about these people are not not very flattering and I just don't I mean not that I'm a huge fan of any of the people she's talking about or like I'm offended on their behalf but I almost sort of am just I wish she would have taken the time or the effort to create fictional characters that um you know, she could have personified them in a similar way without using real people. So, um, also I just think it's boring. She has started dating, um, a homeless guy and she comes from, you know, this society where it's high society and it's all about names and who you know and what you know and how much money you have and la di da di da And, um, it's just very shallow and she's dating this homeless guy and, I don't know. I just don't like a lot of the things that are said. She also has some um, a homosexual best friend guy, and he is very, 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 very stereotypical and very. I just I don't like the way he's being portrayed. Overall, I'm giving this like so far two stars, and I think I'm on part like 25 of 33, and so I've got. I don't know how much, what percentage that is left, but I'll probably finish that today too. So um, that one's not looking so good, and then. Physically, I have the one by John Mars um, uh, from the library, and so since I have some extra time to read that, I didn't think I was going to get read because I was just trying to read so many other things, so I might get that read, and then I'm not sure if I'll have one more loan on script or not. This is my, the Starter Wife is my second, and normally I only get two, but sometimes I get three, so we'll see if I have another loan on that. And I'll just ch check in later. So this morning, um, as far as life goes, we... I got up, did breakfast, did a prenatal workout, and then we've been watching some Cosmic Kids yoga, um, and both kind of doing that. Like, that is a good enough thing that I can kind of sit on the floor and semi-do it at, while reading or whatever, and um, that's good. So, we've been doing that, and then uh, you can just tell kind of the floor in our playroom is kind of trash right now, but so it goes. Um, it's probably just going to stay this way for the next couple weeks, I would guess. I don't know. Actually, I might um, right now turn on my audiobook and we might um, clean together. So it is almost noon, so we'll probably do lunch soon, but we um, did late breakfast because this morning I got my daughter up and she just wanted to read books and then she wanted to read books together, but different books. And so I got to do some reading of in five years at that time. So um, that was awesome. And yeah, so it's a big day around here. We are potty training. We are cleaning. We're reading good books and a not so good book, but we're finishing stuff. So that's awesome. And we'll check in later. Bye. I forgot to say two other things about this book that um, are awesome is one, it's only 250 pages and then two, it's got very short chapters. So it's what Sarah from um, Steeped in Books calls potato chip chapters where you can't just have one, like you have to keep going back for more. So this reads very, very quickly. Um, if you can hear, we're watching K-State basketball highlights in the background because my daughter loves watching sports more than anything. And um, since there's no sports on, we're watching highlights from this past season. So that's what we're doing today. Talk to you later. Hey guys, so it is about three o'clock and I finished um, The Starter Wife by Gigi Grazer and I am going to give it two stars, just like I had kind of said. I don't really have a whole lot to add. Um, except that I just, I really lost interest, didn't care, didn't like really any of the characters. So, um, there are a few parts that were kind of comical. So I guess that's why I'm giving it two instead of one. And I could see why some people maybe like this book, but for me, it just was not good. So two stars on that. 
So that means my physical book is done, my audio book is done, and so now I'm in my room and I'm deciding what to pick up next. And so I think I'm gonna start Dakota Home by Debbie McComer on audio. And um, that's book two in the Dakota series. I had just, I've just read the prequel novella and then the first one. And so now I'm gonna read the second one. And I'm a little bummed because like the first one is about a girl who comes to this town called Buffalo Valley in North Dakota and um, meets a rancher or whatever. She becomes a school teacher. This town is like dying and you meet everybody in the town. And I kind of thought the series would then focus around some of the townspeople, but now this one, the second one, is about her friend who ends up buying the local grocery store and coming from Savannah to the town. And so like, I have a feeling it's gonna be pretty much the same story all over again, just with different characters. And like, you still have the townspeople as the background, so, um, I don't know. We'll see how I like it. It's got higher ratings. It's a 4.07 on Goodreads. So I'm guessing it's good or at least cute. So um, I'm excited to read this one. Um, I just started it a few minutes ago. And it's about, I think it's going to be her. And then um, there's like a Mr. Fix-It. And he's got a son and a daughter. And so it's about his son who is a rancher who lost his leg in an accident. So he is... Um, he ha only has one leg, and so he's self-conscious about that, and he just met the town grocery girl, so we'll see. Um, physically, I'm going to start The One by John Mars. Um, this one is another one that I have from the library. Let me figure out how to hold, how to hold it up. Um, the One by John Mars, and so yeah, I have this from the library, and it was due back, but then the library closed, so I have a little extra time. Um, this one has another, it's another book with really short chapters, and it's a longer book, but I just love the short chapters. I feel like, especially with life, with us all being home and stuff, it's like just being able to pick up and read a chapter or two here or there is really good and really keeps me reading, especially physically, um, when it's kind of hard to focus. So I really like this style, and I'm excited to read it. I've heard very good things. So um, that's my reading plan. I don't know. I probably won't finish anything today for sure, but um, I might do one more check-in and let you know what I think. I'm going to listen to the audiobook for a while, and then I'll physically read this um, tonight after dinner and before bed. So that's the plan. We'll talk later. Hi guys, I just wanted to come on real quick and let you know that we have been accident free since 3.30 and it's like 7.30, 7.40 right now. So that's awesome. We just decreased the interval to 20 minutes. So mama's a little exhausted, but um, no pee pee to clean up. So that's good. Um, I also am like 75 pages into the one by John Mars and I'm loving this. Like the short chapters are literally like three pages each and it's following five different people. And so you get like three pages from one person, three pages from the next, and it rotates through the five people. And so like this, I mean, I could, if I had the energy, I would easily read this tonight. If I, if I could stay up, I think I would. Um, because it's just so like, yeah, there's, I mean, there's kind of stories that I like a little bit better than others, but really I just want to know everybody. And like, I feel like I want to read through a cycle. So read through all five every time I sit down, which is good. Cause that's like at least 15, 20 pages that just fly by in a, in a flash. So loving that. Um, and it's also just making me think like if this existed, I don't know if, if everybody knows what this is about, but it's about, um, a technology, it's like a utopia or a dystopia, depending how you view it, um, about a society in which you can do this test my DNA or something, and it um, tells you based on your DNA who your soulmate is. And as long as that person is registered in the system, it'll match you and give you contact information and stuff. So um, it's talking about like now that this technology is available, it's broken up a ton of marriages because people do it and find out that's not who their match is. They're married to somebody who's not their match or like if you're mar if you're matched with somebody of the same gender or a different gender than you think your sexuality is or um, decades older or younger than you or way across the world. Um, so I just think it's so interesting. Like, would you want to know? Tell me in the comments below. Would you want to know? Um, especially coming from 
somebody who is married and all that kind of stuff, it's like, I don't know. I think as a young single person, heck yeah, I would want to know. Because even if it was somebody way older or like unavailable for whatever reason, it would still be interesting to know. Um, but as someone who's married, it's like, do you want to test your marriage in that way? I don't really know. So um, let me know your thoughts. But so it's 730. We have just kind of been late today because, um, I don't know, I have not been feeling good at all. So I was really lazy about making dinner and we didn't eat until like 6.45. Um, so we just got done. So we're going to let my daughter play for just a little bit and then do bath and bed a little bit later. It's Friday night. We can get wild. We can stay up till 8.30. Whoop, whoop. So um, <laughs> that's that. So I will check in tomorrow and let you know how things are going. Bye. Hey guys, so I'm coming to you from a different room today, and um, I just wanted to get on and let you know it's like 10.30 on Saturday, and I read some more of The One by John Mars last night, and I am still just loving it, and it's making my mind go crazy. Like, what what would you do? And like, the one situation got brought up where she filled, that, filled out her information and stuff and sent it to this match my DNA thing. And then her match didn't join for like 10 years later. So, like I said, if I was single and young, I would for sure do it. But then what if my match didn't show up until I was mid thirties or something and in a totally different place in life. So that's just so interesting. I think this concept is really good. Um, my husband did, he's very, um, like logical and analytical. And so he said, if it's based on DNA, um, like biological matching, wouldn't it all be straight relationships because isn't the pur purpose reproduction? Um, and I don't know. I mean, that just made me kind of question things. And I, I think this is um, obviously a fictional world, so John Mars can do whatever he wants. But I just think that's interesting to think about. And then, um, yeah, so that is that. And then Dakota Home, I think, is the second in that um, Dakota series by Debbie McComer. And I'm listening to that. That is going okay. It's kind of cheesy. Something just happened that um, I don't know, like, the results of it yet. But if it's what I think it's going to be, then it's going to knock this book way down for me. So there's four books, I think, in the series. But the fourth one is like a Christmas book. And I can't find it anywhere on Amazon except, I mean, you can find it on Kindle. But it's kind of expensive and you can't fi find physical copies. So I don't know if it's a novella or what. But ratings are also super low. And it's marked that I have read it and gave it three stars. So I'm not going to worry about rereading it. But... I'll try to read the first three. I've only got the first two on my shelves, but the third one is on um, Libby from my library. So anyway, I'm going to finish up the second one. Um, right now I'm working on a recipe book project, and I'm watching some YouTube videos. And um, then I'm going to continue to work on laundry and just try to get stuff done today. So that's the plan, and we will check in later. Bye. And it is Saturday night about 7 o'clock and I just thought I'd get on and let you know that I just finished Dakota Home by Debbie McComer. It's second in her Dakota series and I said in my last clip I thought it was going to go somewhere and if it went there I would not be happy and it went there. And so then the rest of the book was um, some miscommunication, a lot of stuff going on that um, a lot of people dating other people for weird reasons and um this one is three stars for me. It was not her best. It was good to see the whole town. But again, it's like the whole town is just kind of interacting with each other, trying to, this one especially, it felt like they were trying to get their way. Like everybody was kind of manipulating everybody else. And I didn't really like that. And there's um, some accidental pregnancy. There's, um, which by the way, is nobody on the pill. Like, it's like anytime there's unprotected sex, it's like a huge deal, guaranteed pregnancy. Is nobody on the pill or like the patch or any of that kind of stuff? And even without, like, even if I suspend my disbelief, nobody's on any sort of birth control and whatever, still, like, it's not, I don't know. That's just my soapbox. I will not go there because I have gone there probably more times than you care about. So, um, I don't love that trope and I don't this book was three stars for me. So I'm going to read the third one. And like I said, I have the first two on my shelves physically. And if I like the third one, I'm going to purchase it. So I have the full trilogy. Um, there is a fourth book, but I think it's a Christmas novella and it's, I've heard just nothing but bad things about it. So, um, I might purchase the third to complete the trilogy. Otherwise I'll just leave it at two and maybe, or maybe not unhaul it. So 
that's that right now um we're done with dinner i'm gonna go downstairs we're gonna watch some of the mass singer and uh I'm going to read the one. So that's what we're going to do. And I will check in tomorrow. Bye. Hey guys, so it's about 7 o'clock on Sunday. And I just thought I'd get on and give a quick update and close out this vlog. So I don't think I'm going to finish anything else reading-wise. So I thought now would be a good time. I'm about halfway through Always Home, or Always Dakota, which is the third in the Dakota series by Debbie McComer. And I'm liking it better than the second one. It's uh, the story of Margaret, who is like a female rancher. She was raised by her dad, and then her dad dies at the beginning of this book. And so she gets to take over the farm, and so it's her story. And then she has always had a crush on the neighboring farm farmer, and so it's their love story. He has never been interested because she's very much tomboy, not um, at all like your typical girl. She's very, very, very masculine. And so he's not interested. She's also a little bit socially um, stunted, I would say. And so she um, enlisted Maggie from the second book to kind of teach her the ways. So uh, it's their love story. It's cute. I think it's like adequate or appropriately paced. It's not been an insta love, but it's not so slow burn that you're like waiting and waiting and waiting and nothing happens. So so far, I'm enjoying it. I, I like I said, I'm about halfway. I may finish that tonight, but if so, it's going to be late. So the other thing I'm reading is The One by John Mars. I'm reading that physically, and I am still really liking it. I'm like 300 pages in, so I think it's a 400-page book, so I'm close to the end. But uh, it's very creepy, and I didn't expect it to be quite so creepy. Like, I know there's one storyline that is very creepy, but... They're all kind of giving me the heebie-jeebies. So I am really liking it, but today I've just been very slumpy. I sat down to read during nap time, and instead I, like, scrolled social media and uh, did a ton of Snapchatting with my little nephew. The filters on there are on point, especially when you look like this today. So um, we were doing a lot of fun filters, and, yeah, I don't know. That's really my only excuse. This morning, we have been really just doing stuff around the house because it's cold and rainy and um, social distancing and isolation. So we have just been around the house working on stuff. And I listened to my audiobook while I did some of that this morning. Um, but otherwise, it has not been a super productive day reading-wise. Uh, but it has been. Like the toy room's organized and all that good stuff is done. So that's been today. Um, we, I think, are going to try to watch our church sermon online. Maybe we watched the kids part earlier, and so now we're going to try to watch the adult part before our bath time and bedtime and all of that. And that's really about it. As I was editing this vlog up to now, and the things I have not updated on but I've mentioned is my husband's hair. We never did get around to cutting it, so he cut it into a mohawk but couldn't do the top by himself so that needs to be taken care of and we still have not done that so um he's kind of rocking the mohawk but again we're <laughs> like it was a joke and now we're the only ones to see him so it's just staying for a while and then um potty training day three we've had a, a tiny little accident today but like I wouldn't even call it that it was our fault because we've been taking her every 20 to 30 minutes and she we forgot and so she told us she had to go and, like, she just barely didn't quite make it. But she, you know, she did her thing. So that was good. Um, she's doing really well. Tomorrow is Monday, and I'm going to be on my own, which is good. But I just have been feeling so terrible. This pregnancy has been so much harder and a lot of heartburn and a lot of nausea and a lot of, like, no energy. So kind of have the Sunday blues, but it'll be good. Um, tomorrow morning is I have a doctor's appointment, so I'm not even going to. My husband's going to watch her through that anyway. So, um, yeah, that's really the update. I don't have anything else, I don't think. So, if you have watched this whole vlog, no. thank you. It's kind of a long one. No. If you've read any of the books that I have read or talked about, please let me know what you thought of them. If you have any recommendations based on the books I read, let me know. And we'll talk to you next week. Bye.